Welcome to Blending the Family, the podcast. Topics can range from what is good wine on a first date, parenting tips, and not being afraid to ask for help. Here's your host, whose inner child is still his outer child, Tommy Maloney. Welcome to another edition of the podcast known as Blending the Family. I am your host, Tommy Maloney. Thanks for listening. Thanks for tuning in. If you're on the treadmill right now, come on, jack it up. Come on. What is that, 4.5? Please, come on. Get a little faster. Did I mention I'm your host, Tommy Malone? I think I did. If this is your first time listening to this podcast, it's uh, an honor for you to be here. Does that make sense? I don't know. I hope it makes sense. How are you doing? Are you having a good day? Did you have a crappy day? I hope, I hope I'm hope. i about to make it better. I hope. Because, man, man, the last time you and I talked, it was it was rough. It was rough. So if this is your first time listening, let me let me recap. Um, in episode 115, we talk about the passing of our our buddy, our pal, our uh, dog Duke. Uh, he made it to 16. He was um, he was struggling. That poor guy was struggling. And I'm going to get she she gave me her permission, and she's going to uh, hopefully she'll email me back, but. Uh, her name is Dr. Amy. She was the hospice vet that came to the house. And what a lovely, lovely lady, Dr. Excuse me, Dr. Amy. And so I'm going to get her on the podcast. We're going to talk about hospice for pets down the road. Um, and just, I want her take on why, why isn't this more, uh, what's the word, uh, advertised i i didn't know until i t- talked to my mom and my mom's like oh you gotta do hospice and so we did and, and, you know speaking of guests speaking of guests i i, I was listening to a, a, a podcast a very very famous podcast i'm not going to mention it because i'm afraid you'll go you'll leave me you'll just leave me because you're like eh, you suck anyway i'm kidding I'm kidding but um so the podcast host had this guest on, and he's been asking this guest to be on his podcast for like 10 years. So I was like, you know what? I got 10 years, and here's what I did. I follow Terry Crews on Instagram. So I messaged him. Haven't heard back. I, I didn't ask. I didn't ask yet for him to be on the podcast. I want to build up, okay? want to build up. So, one day, one day, hopefully before I'm dead, uh, we'll have Terry Crews on. How's that? I don't know. All right. I'm looking for, okay, so I, I, I was, I've been thinking about this, and this is weird. I'm weird. You, you know, again, if this is your first time listening, I apologize. But for those of you that have stuck with this podcast week in, week out, uh, thank you. And I started thinking, I would like to have a underwear sponsor. Seriously. So I used to wear, um, what were they? Uh, something me. Something me. But now I switched over to, and I know, these are, uh, this is, I'm giving you some great visualization. Uh, but I've switched over to buck naked underwear, and I really like them. So I'm thinking, That'd be kind of cool to have. I would like to have a clothing sponsor. I love my I love hoodies. So if uh, if you want to send me a hoodie, what the heck? Um, heck, if you want to help sponsor uh, the third book, uh, my dad's advice at five oh four a.m. I only need three grand. Just three grand. I don't know where the hell I'm gonna get that money anyway. So yeah, I'm thinking I would like to get an underwear sponsor. Uh, me undies that's the name of it so i used to wear me undies now i really like the buck naked stuff so i'm thinking what the heck i mean you can podcast anywhere so how cool would it be to have a sponsor where you would actually sit there in their underwear and you know i'm i'm not a uh, i'm not a like a uh, model i wouldn't call myself a model but i think it'd be hilarious having pictures of me sitting in a chair where you know right now um in a hotel room in Bakersfield, California, 
and I think it'd be hilarious. What do you think? Tommy at blendingthefamily.com. Just send me an email. Tommy at blendingthefamily.com. Um, I have these guests lined up. It's just recording them. And so we talked about Dr. Amy. We talked about one day having uh, Terry Crews on. Uh, a good friend of mine, one of my mentors, uh, wants to come on the podcast. Her name is Denise. And we're trying to play with that. And I think it would be interesting for her to interview me, maybe. I don't know. So, anyway. All right, let's get to uh, the meat and potatoes of the show. So, I, I, I titled this uh, episode uh, Fog, right? Uh, fog rolled in. Years ago, I was at a uh, Toastmasters meeting. If you're not familiar with Toastmasters, Google it. Toastmasters International. It will change your life. And one of the uh, members of the club who I had known but I didn't really know well was talking about his depression. He was talking about how in in his mind it's like fog rolling in and then once the fog rolls out then he, he's feeling better. And I think I went through that and I, th- I don't want to say I'm going through depression. I, I think I'm just going through the the grieving stages. So again, the last episode we talked about, I, I went through some ups and downs that weekend that uh, the passing of Duke, but that was also the weekend um, my son Connor and I uh, went to the Chicago Blackhawks game against the Colorado Avs and got to watch the Blackhawks lose again to the Avs two years in a row. That was a great time. You know, I love getting uh, an opportunity. It was uh, extra time I got. So I'm an every other weekend dad. So I was able to have Connor uh, that afternoon where uh, he and I can um, watch the game, uh, eat nachos. We drank water, no soda. We're, that's a cool thing. We're both not big soda fans. And just spend time together. And any time... Uh, as a divorced dad or a divorced parent, you get extra time. That is such a bonus, okay? Such a bonus. Well, while at the game, I got a text from my mom saying that my grandmother was in the hospital. And I'm going, great, great. I hope she's okay uh, at that time. But all I'm thinking is, oh, my gosh, she's like in her 90s. Who's going to pass first? Because we already had scheduled the the uh, the vet coming for Duke. Now my grandmother's in the hospital. I'm thinking, who's going to pass first? So here I am at the Hawks game. Here I am spending quality time and having fun with Connor. And my my world is just, I'm trying to stay positive. I'm trying to stay happy. And then the next day was the schedule of uh, Dr. Amy coming. We we uh, had you know Duke go to sleep permanently. Uh, hopefully, when I get back this uh, tomorrow, I will. Uh, I think we have the ashes. I'm 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 really looking forward to seeing uh, that. Anyway, I digress. So I'm going up and down with emotions. And so last night, I was watching one of my favorite uh, shows, and I'm not a big TV watcher. But there are times where I have to decompress. And I was watching HBO's uh, Real Sports with Brian Gumpel. And Brian Gumpel was interviewing another one of my uh, dream guests. David Ferrity. I was trying to do a Irish accent and I couldn't do it. But David Ferrity is somebody I would love to uh, get on this podcast. Because I, I see a lot of similarities with his message of... Um, well, not really his message, but just his personality. Um, he's doing a one-man show. I want to go see that. So he's he's not he doesn't do a lot of dates on it. But but David Faraday was on uh, Real Sports because recently uh, his son passed away, and so uh, David Faraday was talking about um, how he felt he wasn't there for his son. I. Uh, you know, as as an analyst for the Golf Channel and uh, NBC, and 
doing other things. He just wasn't there uh, for his son, he felt. And so I'm sitting in this hotel room bawling my eyes out because I felt like that. I feel like that. I'm not home uh, for my family. I know I'm providing, okay? Don't get me wrong. And I think that's what uh, David Faraday, not putting words in his mouth, but I think deep down he understood that's what he had to do. He had to provide for his family. He had to do these, you know, this work, this job. And so I'm, like I said, I'm laying in bed just bawling my eyes out. And I think a lot of it had to do with the previous weekend. But at the same time, as a parent and as a parent that travels a lot for their work, let me rephrase that, not for my work, for my job. Because I firmly believe the difference between uh, a job and work is that you can get fired from your job but you can never be fired from your work, okay? Your work is your calling. Work is your passion. Work is your niche. Uh, Work is why uh, you were put on this planet. Job, eh, pay the bills, okay? Anyway, I started thinking more and more about this today of what what I really wanted to talk about, and this, this was it. This was that, again, as parents who... Uh, not necessarily travel a lot, let's, let's, but maybe they're away for a weekend or maybe they're away for a few days or what have you. And, you know, it's that, that FOMO, fear of missing out. And so I know uh, a lot of dads. I've talked to a lot of dads out there. And uh, we've talked about, you know, you're not in the same household. You're not... Um, seeing your kids on a regular basis so you you have those those um moments where you don't get to spend that quality time and so watching david faraday on this interview that's what i felt i felt that even though he was providing for his family um he he wasn't able to be there for his kids and so I started thinking more and more about that, and it really, really uh, upset me. It's been upsetting me for a while, and this is one of those situations where I've put myself in these situations. So there's a lot of guilt because here I am again. I had taken a job where there's a hundred percent travel. There's, you know. Uh, Oh my gosh! So the the past weekend uh, was my weekend uh, with Connor. It was just he and I. Uh, my wife Ann was out of town for a Kiwanis Key Club. I, I have to be better at focusing as far as there's a difference between Kiwanis, which is the adults, and Key Club are the teenagers. So, uh, oh, let me just let me just put this out there real quick, and that is if you have teenagers. High schoolers, have them look in the key club. Oh, my gosh. I met some amazing, amazing teenagers that are going to rule this world and are going to make so many changes. Uh, It was just incredible meeting these teenagers. So, um, please, parents, look in the key club for your kids and see if that's something they'd be interested in because it's amazing. So, I digress again. My flight, uh, I was going from, I was in Canada, I was going from Vancouver, British Columbia, excuse me, to uh, Denver, Colorado. Uh, It was announced that not one, but apparently two tires had to be replaced on the plane. That took about an hour for them to fix. We backed out of the gate. The flight was supposed to leave at 4.30 uh, local time. So about 5.30, quarter of 6, we we were finally on the plane. The plane backed out of the gate. We're sitting there waiting, waiting. I just had this awful feeling that something's not right. Sure enough, the pilot says the weight and balance is off. We got to go back to the gate. They had to move luggage from one cargo hold to another, and that took like another 20, 30 minutes. So... 
the the point there is we didn't land we didn't land back in Denver until 10:30ish and uh for the weekend I uh was renting a car so by the time I finally got to pick Connor up it was midnight by the time we got home it was 1 a.m. So here's work with me on this one. So here's the thing. If the flight had got in on time, it would have been around eight o'clock. Let's just say worst case scenario, I would have picked him up at nine o'clock. We were planning on having a late dinner. We were gonna go have some fun by going to Waffle House. Yeah, I'm gonna let that sink in. Yeah, we're going we were going to Waffle House. Love Waffle House. Personally, I think they have one of the best coffee. I think their coffee is probably one of the best. Okay? Anyway, because landing so late, then the other part of this is it was snowing. So driving home, I'm white knuckling it, so we're not going to Waffle House. Get home at 1 o'clock in the morning. And had to get up the next day early because my mom was coming into town for her mom. Uh, uh, the, so my grandmother's doing well, by the way. I guess I should mention that. My grandmother's doing really well. She got a pacemaker uh, put in. Uh, last I heard, just a day or two ago, uh, my mom said that uh, Grandma Helen is doing really well. But the, that Saturday morning, Connor and I had to go... No, sorry, sorry, sorry. That was Sunday. Sunday we had to pick her up. Okay, so Saturday, it was Connor and I. So it was just he and I getting to spend time together. Uh, I made French toast. Um, we we didn't do a whole heck of a lot. I was still jet-lagged. But we were able to spend time... Um, Hockey never ends in our house. <laughs> so he and I went to the local rink uh, where they have what's called stick and puck where you pay some money, you go and out on the ice and you go and, and shoot pucks at goalies. Luckily, Connor's a goalie, so got to shoot on him. And then we had wings for dinner, so things were going really well. But then Sunday was just a jam-packed day. Had to get up super early. Had to go pick up my mom at the airport. Um, you know, Sunday was just wasn't a lot of time spending together. And I need a weekend of just nothing, nothing. So the point here is, there is always going to be guilt. As a parent, when you are not with your kids, yes, there are times where you're like, hoo hoo, no kids, but <laughs> it's really hard when you're an every other weekend type parent where you don't get to see your kids constantly, especially now with teenagers and they don't return calls and things like that. And so I, I call it, I kid around with Connor and I stop ghosting me because I will text him or call him and never get responses so I feel for David Faraday um, and, and others uh, maybe are listening that you've lost a, a child and it's hard I, I've never been in your shoes but I can only imagine and, and I hope I hope it's okay if I can say that okay so In my situation, um, like I said, I, I felt a little bit of fog rolling in, but but I think, again, it was more of still overcoming the grieving uh, aspect of Duke. And, again, the emotions were up and down. And I, I just need, I think I just need some me time. Even though, you know, it's funny because I'm in a hotel. I'm alone a lot. But it's not home. Does that make sense? I, I hope that makes sense. I want to be home doing nothing. I want to be home um, in my own bed. I want to be home 
you know, being able to uh, just relax, you know. So I hope this episode made sense. I hope it really helped you um, because I, I want parents to know, and, yeah, I'm going to be biased. I want dads to know you are doing what you have to do. Um, and it, it goes back to um, uh, an email I received, and I, I told this gentleman who we named, what did we name? Um, Kyle. I think it was Kyle. And I, I told this uh, Kyle, I said, the, within the email, what he told me what he was going through, and I said, Kyle, to me, you sound like a great dad. Um, just keep being a great dad. Don't worry about your former spouse. Uh, don't worry about you know outside distractions. Focus on your kids. Focus on yourself. Number one, focus on yourself. Focus number two on your kids, and number three, focus on your wife. Um, I recommend to him. You know, make sure you're having date nights with your spouse. Make sure you're uh, taking time for yourself to just maybe maybe just sit and be quiet. Just listen, meditate, what have you. Um, you know, spend time with your kids separately, together, things like that. And I want to recommend... I, I love recommending books. I love giving out books. Um, so three books I'm going to recommend. The first one is David Goggins' book. And I'll put this... You know what? I should write this down. Put this in the show notes. Uh, David Goggins. Hold on. Let me write this down. David Goggins. And I bring this up because my mom was asking me about him. And so I'm going to see her... This coming weekend, I'm going to bring her this book. The next book I'm going to recommend is uh, it is tied to David Goggins' book. David Goggins is a former Navy SEAL, um, so I highly recommend that book. The other book I recommend, this is how it's tied together, is Jesse Itzler, I T Z L E R, I believe. Um, his book is called Living with a SEAL which ended up being David Goggins. And if you don't know who uh, Jesse Itzler is, uh, he was he was a former rapper, I believe. Um, he owned a... He owns part of the Atlanta Hawks. But he's also married to, if you know if uh, ladies, if you know Spanx, you know Sarah Blakely. Well, Sarah Blakely's husband is Jesse Itzler. Uh, I highly recommend uh, Jesse's book, again, Living with a Seal. Very funny, um, very motivating, especially when you're dealing with uh, David Goggins. And then finally, uh, my wife, Anne, gave me this book for as I'm traveling now. And I, I've heard of this gentleman. I don't know a lot about him, but uh, Rick Warren. And the book is uh, The Purpose Driven Life. And it's a, from what I've read so far, you, you read this because there are a lot of Bible verses dealing with 40 days. And this is a 40-day uh, um, figuring out your life purpose. Okay, So, Rick Warren, The Purpose Driven Life, highly recommend this one as I'm going through it and so I'm going to leave you with this and this is um, part of the process you get um, in in uh, the book here Purpose Driven Life you get uh, it's called A Point to Ponder and the, and the one I'm, I'm on day two right now and it says I am not an accident verse to remember I am your creator. You were in my care even before you were born. Isaiah 44, 2. And then you have question to consider. And this was, this was, this is really hard for me, this question, because I think I'm a total mess. I think I'm a total screw up. And so I don't know where to begin. But in your life right now, in your perspective, this, this might help you. And, 
if you're not a, a, a person of faith, if you're not a believer, it's okay. This I, th- I think this is a great question even to ponder for yourself. And here it is. Question to consider. I know that God uniquely created me. What areas of my personality, background, and physical appearance am I struggling to accept? I, please don't let me know your answer. I think that's very personal. Um, let me repeat it. I know that God uniquely created me. What areas of my personality, background, and physical appearance am I struggling to accept? And I, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> physical appearance, yeah, I've been. I, I, I ran last week, didn't run this week. Um, what else? I mean, there's so many. I I don't want to even. I don't want to bore you. But anyway. Those are three books I highly recommend, and I think I'm going to do more of that. I'm going to go through my, my library and, and uh, start recommending books for you. All right. Hopefully one day we will have the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Terry Crews on here. Until then, as I once heard him say in an interview, your success is my success. Thanks for listening. Please leave a rating and review however you get this podcast. And just... Enjoy life. If your fog rolls in, wait. Wait. It will roll back out. Thank you for listening to Blending the Family, the podcast. Sincerely, thanks for listening. Instead of doing something that's actually really important in your life, like, well, taxes, death, funeral arrangements, doing your homework, stuff you're supposed to do for work, working on your car because you can't get it started listening to your wives or your wife. 